We'll take Sri Ganesh Mantra. We'll put our attention on the first petal of Muladhara that goes downwards. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Shri Please make us pure, innocent, and wise like Sri Ganesha. Please bless us with the joy of Brahmananda. Attention on second petal that goes towards left. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Shri Adi Shakti, you in the form of Shri Nirmal Ganesha, please remove all the negativity creating obstacles to my ascent. Please bless me with the majesty and dignity of the pure spirit. Right hand on the lap, left hand on Mother Earth. Attention on right Muladhan. 
जी वेरीली यू आर सर्व राक्षस हंद्रे प्लीज डिस्ट्रॉय ऑल सिक्स एनिमीज ऑफ सोल विद इन मी Please destroy all the animal tendencies within me. Please bless me with humility to receive the divine knowledge and absolute wisdom of your Sri Ganesha. Please bless us with the complete surrender of your Shri Ganesha. Left hand back on lap, attention on the fourth petal that goes upwards. गम गणपत नम माता जी प्लीज फिल ईच एंड एवरी सेल ऑफ आर बी विद द नेक्टर ऑफ योर डिवाइन लव Now we'll follow Shamata Ji's instruction and meditate with her voice. First of all, you put your hand on your heart. In the heart resides Shiva, is the spirit. So you have to thank your spirit that it has. brought light to your attention because you are a saint and the light that has come in your heart has to enlighten the whole world so please now in your heart you pray that let this light of my love of the divine spread to the whole world with all sincerity and understanding that you are connected with the divine and whatever you desire will happen with full confidence in yourself now put your right hand in the upper part of your abdomen on the left hand side on the upper part of your stomach on the left hand side and now here is the center of your dharma here you have to pray that let vishwa nirmal dharma spread in the whole world let people see the light through our dharmic life through our righteousness let people see them and accept the vishwa nirmal dharma by which they get enlightenment 
and a benevolent higher life and a desire to ascend. Now, take your right hand in the lower portion of your abdomen, of the stomach, on the left hand side, press it. Now this is the center of pure knowledge. Here, you have to say as the yogis that our mother has given us the full idea how the Divine works. She has given us all the mantras and all the pure knowledge that we could bear and understand. Let me fully be knowledgeable about that. All of us, I have seen if the man is a leader, the wife doesn't know a word about Sahaja Yoga. If the woman knows about Sahaja Yoga, the husband doesn't know anything about it. Let me be proficient and an expert in this knowledge. So that I can give realization to people, make them understand what is divine law, what is Kundalini and what are the chakras. Let my attention be more on Sahaja Yoga than all these mundane things. Now put your right hand in the upper part of your abdomen. Close your eyes. Now here, on the left hand side, press it. Now here, Mother has given me the spirit and I have my own Guru, which is the Spirit. I am master of my own. Let there be no abandonment. Let there be dignity in my character. Let there be generosity in my behavior. Let there be compassion and love for other surgeries. Let me not show off, but have a deep, deep knowledge about God's love and His doings. So that when people come to me, I should be able to tell them about Sahaja Yoga and give them this great knowledge with humility and love. Now raise your right hand on your heart. Here you have to thank God that you have felt the ocean of joy and you have felt the ocean of forgiveness. And the capacity to forgive as our mother has, which we have seen is so tremendous. Let my heart expand and encompass the whole universe and my love should resound the name of God. The heart every moment should express the beauty of God's love. Take your now right hand in the Vishuddhi, that is on the left Vishuddhi between the neck and the shoulder in the corner. I will not indulge into the falsehood of guilt because I know it is falsehood. I will not escape my faults but face them and eradicate them. I will not try to find faults with others, but in my own knowledge of Sahaja Yoga, let me remove their faults. 
We have so many ways, secretly we can remove the faults of others. Let my collectivity become so great that the whole Sahaja Yoga race is my own family, my own children, my home, my everything. Let me get that feeling completely, innately built within myself that I am a part and parcel of the whole because we all have one mother. And let my concern go to the whole world to know what are their problems and how can, through my true desire, power, solve that. Let me feel the problems of the world in my heart and innately to remove all of them from the basis of which they are, from the basis from which they are generated. Let me go to the principles of all these problems and try to remove them through my Sahaja Yoga powers, through my saintly powers. Now put your right hand on your forehead across. Now here, you have to say, first of all, I have to forgive all those who have not come in Sahaja Yoga. Those who are on the periphery, who come and go, who jump in and jump out. But, first of all, and foremost, I have to forgive all the Sahaja Yogis because they are all better than me. I am the one who tries to find faults with them, but I am at the lowest ebb and I have to forgive them because I must know that I still have to go very further. I am still much less. I have to improve myself. This humility has to come within us. So you have to say here, let the humility in my heart, in a true sense, not hypocritical, work out this feeling of forgiveness so that I bow to reality, to God and to Sahaja Yoga. Now you have to put back your hand on the back side of your head and push back your head here and you have to say here, Oh Mother, whatever wrong we have done to you so far, and whatever wrong goes in our minds, and whatever smallness we have shown to you, whatever way we have troubled you and challenged you, please forgive us. You have to ask for forgiveness. In your intelligence you should know what I am. I don't have to tell you again and again. Not at Sahastara, you have to thank me. At Sahastara, put your hand, move it seven times and thank me seven times. Mother, thank you very much for the realization. And Mother, thank you very much for making us understand how great we are. And thank you very much for bringing all the blessings of the Divine. And thank you very much for raising us higher, much higher than from where we were. And also thank you very much for sustaining us and for helping us to improve ourselves and correct ourselves. And thank you very much ultimately that Mother, you have come on this earth, taken your birth and working so hard for us, for all of us. Press it hard and move it hard. Kali Basa. Kali Basa. Kali Basa. Kali Basa. Kali Basa. Kali Utra. Kali Utra. Kali Utra. Kali Utra. Kali Utra. Get down. Get down. Just don't get down. Now take down your hands. Heads are all very hot. So now let us give ourselves a nice bandhan. In the bandhan of mother, let us move our left to the right. 
One, nicely. Understanding what you are, what are your auras. Now again, second one. Now the third one. Now the fourth one. Now the fifth. Now the sixth one. And now the seventh. Now raise your Kundalini. Raise your Kundalini slowly, very slowly. Raise it first time, you have to do it very slowly. Now push back your heads and give it a knot, one knot. Second one, let's do it very slowly. And knowing what you are, you are a saint. Do it properly. Maintain our attention on top of our head. We we'll listen to Shamataji's talk. Say somebody falls in the mire. If you kick it, you go deeper. If you try to do anything, you go deeper. Best thing is to keep watching it and still. And that's the best way, is to witness yourself. But your attention is not all right, how will you witness? Attention is, somebody is going that side, that person will see. Another person going that, that person will see. Must see every person. But you don't see the flowers, you don't see the trees, you don't see the Mother Earth, you don't see anything. What you see is something hopelessly bad, worse than you. Today is the day they say one should not see the moon. If you see the moon, it becomes as auspicious and you get a bad name. They said Sri Krishna saw the moon and then he got a bad name, he was Ranchordas, means he had to run away from the battlefield. But that was his trick, he had to run away. So you are not supposed to see the moon. The reason is, why it is said, that today we have to see Sri Ganesh, who is the Mother Earth who acts through Mother Earth. Most of the things that we have are from the Mother Earth. So this time you must see the Mother Earth, the Kundalini and Sri Ganesh today. The Mother Earth has created Sri Ganesha. So you don't see anything outside, you don't even see the moon. Just see the Mother Earth. Because it's the Mother Earth, in her love and compassion, has done so much for us. Your Kundalini has done so much for us. And her Son, who is the innocence within us, is to be worshipped today because He has done the maximum. Despite all the insults we have put on Him, all the ridicule, all the filth, all kinds of nonsense, still He stands up like a little child to amuse us. If Sri Ganesha is within you, become like a child. 
childlike in a sense. You don't get angry with somebody like a dog barks or never. There are some Sahaja Yogis I know who all the time barking, just like dogs or beggars in India. But you become like a child who is very sweet, he always tries to amuse you, always tries to say nice things, always tries to make you feel happy, a source of such joy. And that's how you become, a source of joy, source of happiness, source of fulfillment. all the time bubbling with laughter and happiness, bubbling with beautiful things. How the children amuse you, just see and watch. How they come round with little, little hands, how they work it out. How they know what is the right thing. A child who is a realized soul, is much more sensible than a grown-up person, I've seen that. Like my youngest granddaughter was about, I think, three years of age, and the maid was folding my sari, and by mistake she put it on the ground. This child just couldn't bear it, she just lifted the sari, put it to her head and put it on the uh, sofa. She said, what do you mean by putting this sari on the ground? What do you know my, my grandmother? She is the goddess of goddesses. And you put her sari on the ground. The dogs are going to bite you now, she said. Be careful. And she again went and took the sari, kissed it and kissed it. I said, Mother, uh, forgive her. Grandmother, please forgive this woman. She doesn't know what she's done to you. But that sensitivity comes from the depth of your chastity. You listen to the children and you'll be amazed how they talk and what they say, how they behave, how they try to amuse you. I mean, in the West children are very much spoiled, I must say. They do not amuse you so much, they trouble you quite a lot. Because again, again the same thing. If the father and mother don't have chastity, the children don't feel all right, they don't feel peaceful, they become restless. And then they develop the same restlessness within themselves. A chaste man can never get possessed, take it from me, can never get possessed. You might be very intelligent, you might be anything, you might be a great writer, but you can get possessed. But a chaste man, an ordinary chaste person can never get possessed. Booths are afraid of chaste people. If one chaste person is going on the road, all the booths run away. They just run away. At least I've known many cases, but some of them I can tell you, that there were two, three of them who used to go by motorcycle in the night, about twelve o'clock on a road. And some people who were possessed wrote letters to me saying that, please don't ask allow them to go there in the night because where should we go and stay? I was amazed. These are the people who are possessed by some sort of horrible boots who used to go and rest on these trees in the night where these three persons used to go on the motorcycle. And they actually wrote letters to me, very possessed people, I knew them, saying that, ask them not to go that way because it's where, where are we to live? And they were like mad, 
mad people themselves. I said, why did you write like this? He said, these people go that way and they trouble us. And the negative within us disappears with the light of Sri Ganesh. You can see it so clearly in another person. If you don't have chastity, you can never see who is unchaste or chaste. You cannot. Everybody is just the same, very good, very good, very nice person, very nice person. I mean, real possessed people are certified as very good people. In Sahaja Yoga also sometimes. And I start wondering what's happening, see. What is it? How is it these people are certified as that? Can't they feel it? There's no light. Even if you get your Realization, even if your spirit is working out, your collective consciousness, even if you are giving Self-realization to others, you are nowhere if you have no chastity. That's like a broken glass which is trying to reflect something, it can never give the right picture. It's so important. And I have to tell you this now. The time has come for me to tell you, this is the snack in our life. First thing people will ask, whom am I going to marry? What is such a hurry? Of course, marriage, I call it an auspicious thing, marriage should be there, there should be a collective sanction, everything. But for what? To adore the chastity within us. Then they are married, then they have children. Then they want to have a house, then they want to have this. This whole, such an insular business goes on and on and on and the light of your life doesn't spread. But I have known people who were just in the hell and have come out and have spread like Beautiful meteor, meteoric, heights they have achieved. I've seen people like that. So today you have come to worship Sri Ganesh. Within yourself, what is me to worship as Ganesh, I don't understand. Because I'm that. When you are worshiping me, you want to have that Sri Ganesh within you a bit. Let that be awakened within you. Let what I say becomes the mantra to awaken that within you. So that as my children you enjoy the bliss of chastity as I have enjoyed all my human life and all my divine lives. You enjoy the same quantity, that's what I want. At least you should have the taste of it. I'm telling you about something which you may not have heard before. But you never heard about Kundalini also. You had never heard about Self-realization like this. But today I think by chance, absolutely in a Sahaja way, this puja was arranged. I was to have this puja in Bombay. It was all organized, people were all willing to come there to do this puja. I mean, a Ganesha Puja in England or in the West is so important that I thought better have it one without the right time in Rome, which is the, one of the basic things which has ruined the chastity of human beings. Romans started it and others carried on. But it was to be here in Brighton. I 
at the lotus feet of Sadashiva. But the English must know that they have got such a golden land and they don't deserve it. They have to deserve it. Imagine you are living in the land of Sadashiva, where even water is also the snow, means like distilled water, clean, clear, white. Where Sri Ganesha is the one who washes the feet of His Father. Where the chastity itself resides as your mother. And you have to deserve that coveted position. English Savaj yogis have to come up very much. Just the opposite English way. Coming from Sadashiva's land, just the opposite. Tremendous arrogance. Arrogance so horrible which one cannot think in Shiva's place. All unchaste people are arrogant. Otherwise, how can they forgive themselves? You talk to any prostitute, in two minutes you'll find out she's a prostitute because she's extremely arrogant. What's wrong? I'm a prostitute, so what? Arrogance is a sign of unchaste personality. And such a person also becomes insular because he is ashamed, ashamed to face others. But a chaste personality is open. Why should he be afraid of anyone? Talks to everyone nicely, kind to everyone, in all innocence and simplicity, without falling in love in every third person you come across. And that one has to realize, that this country is given to you with a purpose. And if you do not come up to that level, you'll be thrown away.
महामंत्रास Let's all collectively bow down and put ourselves in Bandhan.
thank you for joining today's session. Have a blessed and normal day, everyone. Jai Shri Mataji.